Hey everybody, it's Cindy with Monarch Mom DIY. Here on my channel, I like to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. If you're new to my channel, I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. And if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Today I have three new budget-friendly fall decor DIYs for you. This first one, I'm using a frame in my stash, some leaves, some chalk paint, and some gingham ribbon from Hobby Lobby. So I am always on the lookout for interesting wood picture frames. This one does have the glass in it, but here I am removing the backing and the glass, and I'm going to give this frame a coat of my Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. This is such a soft, fun um, orange to use, especially for fall. I wish I would have gotten a larger jar of it. But um, just going around, I'm just going to give this frame a coat of this beautiful orange fall color. While my frame is drying, I'm taking the glass insert and I'm using some of this chalkboard paint. I believe I got this at Hobby Lobby. And I've never used it on glass before. I did do three coats um, normally on um, wood or when I've used it before, um, I've only done two coats, but I just thought with the glass to get it to cover completely and as you can see here I used way too much. This stuff really is kind of watery and goes a long way. So make sure you read the instructions. It does say to um, do one coat going vertically and let that dry for at least an hour and then do another coat going the other way. Now even though I love this orange color I wanted to kind of darken it up a little bit so using my Waverly Antique Wax I'm just um, brushing some on not completely but kind of um, well you can see I'm just doing it kind of streaky and then uh, rubbing it with a paper towel just to give kind of a I don't know like a tea stained or coffee stained kind of look to it just to make it look a little more old and worn. So after doing three coats of the chalkboard paint and letting them dry in between, it does say you need to cure the surface by rubbing it completely with chalk. I didn't have any white, so I just grabbed a piece of yellow chalk and you're just gonna rub it all the way and then brush it off. I just am rubbing it off with a paper towel. And now this could be used um, as a chalkboard. This stuff is really awesome and just what I wanted for this project. So now I'm returning the glass and the back to my frame and just securing everything in place. And now comes the fun part of decorating my frame. I showed this in my latest Dollar Tree haul. These, this berry garland, I chose to use this one that has both the orange and the dark red berries on it. 
and it is wire so it's really nice to use because you can kind of bend it as you go um, so here I'm deciding to start up in this top left corner and I'm just going to secure this down every um, little bit like on each corner basically just to hold it in place and I do just kind of bend it and um, have it go around and I am going to go around twice with this garland. And here's what it looks like after I've gone around twice with the garland. I just love the um, effect that it gives. And you'll see there are some spots where you can see hot glue, but that's okay because I'm going to cover those up with some of these leaves. So I've had this leaf garland for many years. And so just on one of the ends, I'm just going to cut off a few of the leaves and then pull off also some of these little clusters of berries and I'm just super excited this project is getting me in the mood for fall one of my favorite things about fall is watching the leaves here in Michigan change colors as much as I love the green I do love just the variety and the beauty of God's creation um, in the fall season especially so I'm just trimming off what I think I'm going to use and then here you'll see I will just kind of arrange them in just whatever order looks good to you. That's the great thing. It's kind of like decorating a wreath. This is kind of a rectangular wreath. Um, so here's how I decided to place them. And then I'm just going to hot glue them down. I decided to make my hanger with this 5 8 inch gingham ribbon that I bought at Hobby Lobby. I always buy it when it's half price and I'm cutting way too large of a piece here, but I'm just tying a bow and then I'm going to secure the two ends to the back of my frame with hot glue and then cut off the excess. Now you could totally use a chalk marker to do this and then be able to change what it says, but I pretty much was just going to use this sign in the fall. So I decided to, with my white paint marker, write out, hello fall. And I know some of you are gonna be mad at me that I can write like this um, without practicing with a pencil or whatever, but um, I just don't worry about it being perfect. And I've always loved practicing my cursive even since third grade. So here is the finished sign. I probably will hang this, I believe, on my front door when it gets a little closer to fall. For my second project, I'm going to make a cute little garland for my mantle using seven of these wooden pumpkin ornaments that you can get at Dollar Tree right now. Also some jute twine and some fabric that I showed in my haul, which actually came from Walmart. It's a, their fat quarters at Walmart. So the first thing I'm going to do is give each of my seven pumpkins a coat of that same Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. Thank you. 
After painting all seven of those and letting them dry, I cut out this triangle from cardboard. It is five inches across the straight edge and then six inches long. Just draw two lines to meet at the point and I cut it out. So you can use whatever triangle you'd want. So this fat quarter from Walmart, I did iron it. Here it is folded in half. And then using my cutting mat and my rotary cutter, this is the folded edge. I'm just um, giving it a straight edge so that when I cut out my triangles, they're not connected to each other. I hope that makes sense. So now laying the um, straight edge of my triangle against that straight edge I just cut. I'm using my rotary cutter against the diagonal lines. It's a little awkward <laughs> trying to use my right hand on the left side. But um, so each time I cut around this triangle and didn't look like I got through all the way, no problem. Just lay it back down and cut it again. So I'm cutting two triangles each time I cut around the cardboard since I have two pieces of fabric on top of each other. So I'm going to do this four times until I get eight triangles. That way I can have a triangle between each of my pumpkins and one on each end of my garland as well. So if it's a little ragged, no problem, just clean it up with your scissors. And then going back to my pumpkins, I decided to use some a little bit of truffle on a flat brush just to add a little dimension to each of my pumpkins so they didn't look quite so flat. So once I did this to all seven of my pumpkins, here's what they looked like. And I wanted to kind of lighten up those lines and give them a little bit more of a rustic look. So using my sanding block from Dollar Tree, I'm just gently going over each of my pumpkins. You can also see that I used that same truffle paint to paint the stem of each of my pumpkins. I really liked the lighter color that this made the orange when I sanded it. And then I'm also going to take my white paint marker now and highlight those um, rounded lines a little bit more just to give it a little added effect. And here's the seven pumpkins. Next, I'm taking some thinner jute twine. This is like the kind you would find at Dollar Tree. And I'm just making a small jute twine bow for each of my pumpkins. I like to do this just to cover up the little ornament hole. So doing that to all of them. And then I'm just going to glue those down with a little dot of hot glue. Now I'm taking a piece of my thicker jute twine from Walmart and I folded it in half to find the center. I'm going to first glue a pumpkin in the center of this jute twine and then I'm going to go every other space with the uh, gingham or buffalo check triangle and then a pumpkin. So the way I'm gonna do the fabric is I'm putting a line of glue a little ways down from the top 
and securing it to the triangle and then putting another bead of glue and kind of wrapping the top of the triangle around the string. Here in a second, you'll see what I'm talking about. And then the process is just going to either side of that center pumpkin and continuing the pattern of pumpkin, triangle, pumpkin, triangle. And once you've used all seven pumpkins and eight triangles, here is what the garland looks like. It's so cute and simple for fall. I can't wait to put it up. My third project is fairly simple. I've been collecting different sizes of wood crates for a while. Also using some of these wood stems, some leaves from this sunflower bush, and some chalk paint. So um, I had three other crates that were different sizes. For my smallest, I decided to take two of these 99 cent crates from Michaels and wood glue them together. So using some of my Gorilla wood glue and then some of my little craft clamps from Dollar Tree, I just am letting that dry until they are secured. Some of these crates are so big you can't um, fit them in the screen, but the one on the bottom I think held two bottles of wine. This one that's on top had one bottle of wine in it, um, and then I have another square one. But I am going to use the last of my small little bottle of pumpkin chalk paint. And basically I'm just painting these crates and then I'm going to turn them into pumpkins for my front porch. I'm super excited because probably the most I paid for any of these crates was like $2. And um, I've just been kind of waiting for something to do with them. So I thought this was fun to make this little set of four different crate pumpkins. So once my crates were painted, I took um, two of these wood stems from Dollar Tree that were about the same diameter and glued them to each other and then glued that to the top of my crate to be the top of my pumpkin. I think I used two stems on all of them except for my small um, Michael's Crate pumpkin. Then just cutting off some leaves from that sunflower a bush or bundle. I just am adding those, hot gluing them to the top to look like the leaves on my pumpkins. This is very similar to my tin can pumpkins I made, but more uh, of a simple rustic look without the coils and the jute twine. Okay, it's not a shoulder, but there's my token arm shot in my video. I can't wait to put these out on my porch this fall. I just think they're so cute. I'll probably pair them with my arrow sign that was in my top five video that says pumpkins, apples, sweet corn. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me for these new fall DIYs. Please let me know in the comments which one of these three was your favorite. And if you haven't already, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel and give this video a big thumbs up. I thank you guys so much for all your support in the last not quite two years, year and a half that I've been on YouTube. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.